Hello and welcome back to the channel, we're back today with another rebuild and this time we're going to Bristol City. So I picked Bristol City because my good friend Steve Hood recently did a rebuild with Mighty Birmingham City. So I thought I owe him the favour and do one with his very own Bristol City. Of course there's a lot of hype around a certain Alex Scott this season in FM23 and how good he can develop. Can I keep him for a full five seasons and see how much we can develop Alex Scott in that midfield role and see what we can do with Bristol City in just five seasons. So let's dive in for season number one see what business we've done before the season kicks off here in the Skybet Championship. So here we are then in the Bristol City job. It's season one and we start life here in the Sky Bet Championship. But of course, if you're new around here and you haven't already, make sure you're going down below this video, hitting that subscribe button. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big cheeky thumbs up. So we have played through some of pre-season ahead of the season starting against Hull this weekend. Um, up and down results, not great really, but we really sporting 2-1, which is quite massive really. Trinkau getting a goal for them, but Jada Silva who's came in for us. And Cameron Pring getting the goals. The still beat sporting in pre-season. So possibly a sign of good things to come here at Bristol City ahead of the season. We're going to be starting off rocking a 4-3-3 system where we can use Scott as a Mazala, pushing into this space here and try and help the likes of Weidman up front. Cornick on this right hand side and met me is going to be starting on the left hand side but we've got a few players who probably will rotate into this team in and out but i felt we need a bit more depth at center back so i did spend what little money we do have here at bristol city on jordan story he's at preston at the start of the game we thought why not 1.7 million he's not a bad little defender really he's six foot one jumping reach of 12 13 heading they're not the best but in terms of his tackling attributes there's got to be a pace behind him i thought is it a good level for the championship? He'll be good enough for us this season to sit out and we can see if we can get something better in the coming seasons. So Story comes in alongside one other player. And that second bit of business is Zidane Akbal on loan from Manchester United. The first time midfielder can play in that attacking line there. You can see he can play in the centre midfield and he can play a little bit deeper in the DM role as well. But for me, I'm looking more in the CM role and that attacking line there and seeing what we can do with this guy and see how he develops in one season if he's worthwhile bringing him back on loan for a future season or maybe even buying him because he's not worth a lot of money right now within the game so we'll see what he does over the course of this season and it's worthwhile bringing Zidane Akbal on a permanent deal here to Bristol City. So you've seen the tactic, you've seen the squad, you've seen who we've brought in. Let's see at the end of season one and see how we get on here with Bristol City. So season one in the bag, you can see on the screen now how we ended. We got to the playoffs final, losing out 3-1 to Hull. The team we took on in the first game of the season at the start of this video, we lost 3-1 in the playoff final to Hull City and failed to get promotion in the first season out of the Skybet Championship. FA Cup, we lost to Sunderland and then we lost to Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup. So not a great season in terms of cup and like domestic success, but league table, we came third. We narrowly missed out an automatic promotion there in that second place to Norwich, who took that spot. Hull coming in third, Middlesbrough in fourth, Blackburn in sixth. And we missed out losing that final where we got so, so close to Bristol in our first season, missing out in the playoffs thanks to Hull City. But there's a surprising option up front for us. Naki Wells, who came in this season, had an absolute storm of a season. He bagged 20 goals in his 40 appearances this year in the league for us. And I mean, in the Cups, it didn't really go well for us. You've seen that already. But 20 goals in the Championship is not bad for the striker at all, really. So he's had a great season, Naki Wells has. Another one as well here you can mention as well, Andreas Weiman. He's probably going to be leaving this summer. There's a lot of interest already in Weiman straight away. You can see here on the right-hand side. There's a lot of interest already in Weiman. But again, he had a great season as well, getting 18 goals and 8 assists. And then Harry Cornick as well had a really good season as well, playing a lot of times on that right-hand side and the left-hand side cutting slide, but also playing as a striker, getting 14 assists and 12 goals for him this season. So one of the main players you're probably be wondering about, Alex Scott, we mentioned previously about him being the big wonder kid in this team this season. So this season, he had an alright season, six assists, one goal, no standout really for him really. It was an okay season, nothing massive. There's already slight interest already, you can see there from Brentford, Fulham, Manchester United, Norwich, Southampton and Watford. So it's going to be a hard job keeping hold of him for this season. But... Overall, not a bad season. He's a bit of unhappiness here from Weimar because he wanted to leave in the January window and we said no. And now he wants a new deal to reflect on that ability. So maybe we can keep hold of him. But there is all the interest you can see straight away from Andalek. So European football could take him away from us. So there was one other acquisition that came in in the January transfer window. And that is Julian Arujo came on loan from Barcelona for the season. I thought a bit more depth in right back. And this is the sort of right back I like. Pacey, good crossing, good dribbling, decent enough passing and vision and good work rate to get up and down that line all day long and hopefully get a hat full of assists. He got six in the end in 38 appearances. So not a bad low need to come in really for us and really help out this season. But nothing else really changed from that starting 11 we went through earlier on the season really. Why did he play a bit on the left hand 
outside, but did cut up front as well. When Naki Ball started scoring before, move on out to the wing. Pring's been really good this season. Well, a standout player for us this season has been Cameron Pring. He's been really good for us. So hopefully we can keep hold of him for another year. He's that contract in the next year. So we need to try and get him signed up for another contract. But sadly, we do miss that on automatic promotion and through the playoffs. So we go again in the championship for season number two. Let's roll forward to the start of that season. So we come back for season number two. You can see straight above my head there. We've actually brought no one in so far. It's July 31st. We have a few weeks until the window closes. And our first league games is two weeks away. But we have let some players go. Thomas Callas went to Panathinaikos on a free transfer. Prince Henry, a youth player. Bournemouth, free transfer. Kaji went to Watford in the free. And Zach Voyna, someone I'm not really going to use. I've tried him out. Wasn't really keen. He went on a free transfer to Wigan. But yes, yeah, so far... Nothing has really changed within the team. We're still playing the same 4-3-3. We've brought Masengo back from his loan move now. Of course, he was out on loan last season. He's back as a start for me this season. I'm trying to see how he can develop. 22 years of age. Looks a very good player. High work for us. I do love him there. Good tackling of 14 as well. So I'm hoping he can be the bit of depth midfield that will really help us this season. We're going to try Bell out as a striker this season as well. Sam Bell. He's a bit interesting, but I don't know how he'll get on. But... He probably won't be our starter, of course, we've mentioned the likes of Naki Wells, Voiman, who is still here. He's still asking for that new contract. We haven't gave him just yet, though, because personally, I think we can probably replace him next season to get someone better in if we do get promotion this year. But nothing else has changed so far with the team. No more transfers in, no more business so far. Things could change by the end of that season or in January. But right now, we're staying solid as we start season number two. So we are back. Season number two has ended. And you can see there now, we've actually been given promotion through the playoffs this time. We did successfully win that playoffs final. There's going to be a few spoilers here on screen of some players we have bought in, which we'll get into slowly. But yeah, it went all the way to extra time. Nil-nil at full time. And in extra time, Sergi Canos and Kiao George coming in to get the goals for us. Important goals to see Bristol City promoted to the Premier League. So as you can see now on screen, Sheffield United actually won the league this year on 96 points, born from 94 points. Narrowly not too far behind, were Bristol City on 87 points. It was enough to play for the playoffs again. And we had the likes of Crystal Palace, Burnley and Middlesbrough in there against us. West Ham missing out. West Brom, Blackburn, some big, big clubs missing out on those playoffs this year. But we got in there, we snuck our way in there, and we've gained promotion now to the Premier League for Bristol City. But we mentioned then, there was a few transfers that came in. You came in last time, of course, it was July 31st. And since then, we did do a little bit of business. So first half, we're going to touch on this guy. Cal George came on loan from Juventus. In the championship for the season, this sort of striker is absolutely clinical. He got 25 goals in 43 appearances in the championship. He's one of the reasons we are going up this season. It's been an absolutely insane season for him. Whether or not we try and buy him at the end of the season, now you can see the valuation is not massive. And we'll have quite a bit of money going into the Premier League, you'd like to think. So Cal George, a great first season here at Bristol City. Do we pay that option to buy him? I guess we'll find out in season three. We also had Dario Cemento on loan for the first half of the season. He had a pretty okay time for us, really. 19 appearances, one goal, two assists. It was okay, but it was only a loan until January. And by that point, Man City were like, he needs to be doing more for you. He's not really working for him. So they did take him back. He went on loan to Reading instead. I mean, he did do it much better there, really. 14 games, two goals. So it wasn't a great loan for either club or in the end, realistically. But... I'm not a bad little player. He had a few starts there you saw for us. He was all right, but again, probably not someone we're going to bring back now at the end of the season. Next up was Bo, the right back, coming in. Formerly a grasshopper on loan, but he was actually at Wolf, signed to them, loaned out to Zurich for the last two seasons. But for 2.2 million, I thought this is an absolute steal for a quality right back who can play in the Championship and possibly in the Premier League as well. He's got what I like already. We mentioned a bit of Rujo last season on loan. We couldn't keep hold of him, but a very similar player. He's fast, he can cross, he can dribble, a high work rate as well in there. He did a very good first season with six assists in there as well, playing 43 games for us, so... Bola, not a bad acquisition. Someone I feel that can actually do it in the Premier League already. Um, yeah, we, we bought him for a walk up for a season. It was his last season before he retired. He made one appearance, starting and fourth from the bench. He got a goal. I mean, yeah, that's the story. Theo Walcott now valued at £500 on seven grand a week, came in for a season. He got a goal. Fair play to him. So with that last one was short and sweet on Theo Walcott. Alfie Devine came on a loan from Spurs for the season and he had an absolute quality season. Six goals for us this in 41 appearances. Four sub appearances as well from the bench for us. A really good young player this year in football manager. Someone's well worth getting into your saves and trying to keep hold of it in early doors. I mean, sadly, the valuation is going to be a bit out of our price range going into the Premier League. We can't really afford to take him on a permanent, but a very good option this year to help with Alex Scott, Masengo in that midfield. Devine, 
gaming your teams well worth looking at indeed uh sergi canals came on a free transfer he was released from brentford i believe it was he was at brentford went along to olympiacos that last season free transfer came in first seven appearances seven goals five assists very good player indeed i mean 27 years of age he's still really good quality and the valuation is worth now on a free transfer you can even cash in right now and make a nice pretty penny on him uh, we mentioned some of the others already Leon Foster came on a free transfer, formerly a Spurs, a good fullback option. He can play through the middle as well, but 5'11". He's very much that fullback option, really like a rotational player in those positions for us. But again, not a bad one. And the rest were some low knees then. John Duran came in on loan from Aston Villa. 19 appearances, 12 goals, 1 assist. A very good player, to be honest. But again, that high valuation makes him pretty much untouched worthy for us. And the last two was Morgan Rogers coming in from Manchester City on loan for the free season now. I mean... He's cheap enough to get in, and I mean, six goals, four assists in 15 appearances. He's probably well worth the money to spend that sort of money on him as a rotation player for us again for the next season. But we'll say we get on, but possibly an option we do go for going into the Premier League. And the other one was Oscar Bob, who didn't really, well, he made no appearances. You can see it there on screen. He made no appearances for us. We put him on loan as a rotation option. He isn't really good enough to be on the pitch for us at this point, so... Yeah, he's kind of sat there and did nothing for the season. But, I mean, probably for the best because we did get promotion and we are going into the Premier League for the fucking season. Um, transfers out as well. We should probably mention Vyman. We mentioned Mike Lee at some point. 2.5 million. He went off to Genoa. That's the real big one, really. There's a few smaller ones. George Tanner went on a free transfer. He went out the club. We mentioned Kalas already last season. That's the majority of the transfers, really. Nothing else really happened. We're still going with that 4 3 3 formation, but. With the Premier League, I'm tempted to tweak things, go for like a 2DM system. So a bit stronger at the back, but we'll see. As season number three starts in just a moment, our first season in the Premier League. So we come back for season number three, and we're getting started live in the Premier League. You can see straight away, we had an original budget of 17 million. We have zero. We have spent every penny in our wage budget is in the red. So you can tell we've had a very busy summer ahead of the Premier League starting. I mean, you should probably get in some of these transfers, shouldn't we, realistically? So following the podge some of those loan moves, Louis Sibley was available from Derby County, and I thought, okay, it's a bit of a high asking fee, 9.25 million. But as a player, it's very versatile, I can play in the CM Rock, and play out wide, can play in the cam role. He's still quite young at 22 years of age as well. I thought he's well worth getting in, spending a little bit of money, and getting Sibley in. A bit of English player in there as well, which is always good to have. So Sibley came in, again, a bit of a higher price than I wanted to pay for him, but I thought, you know what, he's worth the punt. I feel like this guy can be good enough to be in this team and really help the volleyballs here in the Premier League. We then went to Montpellier and took Lorenzo Colombo, the Italian striker, on a permanent deal. Again, just over 9 million spent on Colombo, 9.5 million. He didn't join Montpellier a season early for 2.8 million. After getting 12 goals and 28 appearances, I thought that's good enough for me to take him and get him in the Premier League and really try and develop this striker. 22 years of age, not play for the Italian national side by this point, but his valuation's already shot up now between 24 and 27 million. So within the Premier League, one good season here, we could probably cash in and make a good bit of money on the Italian striker. It looks very complete, to be honest, as well. I lost him a bit of a higher work rate, but we were struggling to try and find options within that price bracket that we wanted. But Colombo comes in. It's a very good option. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he gets on. I mean, pre-season, he's bagged four in two games. So good start. Hopefully, he can carry it on into the Premier League season. And by this point, you're probably thinking, Alex Scott, how have you still got hold of Alex Scott going into the Premier League season? He's, he's still here. He's valued between 20 and 29 million now, but there is a slight problem that he's going to miss the Premier League season, basically. He's going to be out. Well, he's been out for a long time. He was out for most of last season. He actually damaged his crucial ligaments and he missed the most part of last season. I forgot to touch on that. At the end of season two, he was out for the majority of the season. He's got two months left. We might actually see the start of Alex Scott, but I wonder... How much of a hit and take on his natural fitness being out for nine months injured, missing the most part of last season and then the start of this season as well. So I'll be trying to see how he develops going forward in these simulations. And of course, how long we can keep Alex Scott for here at Bristol City. But yes, back to the transfers. Following the turn of July 1st, we spent 20 million starting off on Louis Binks for 8 million. We're not the better centre back. We mentioned Story will be a short term option. Louis Binks comes in now, left footed option, six foot three, jump and reach 13, heading to 14. They're pretty good, really. He's not the fastest of guys, but for he's a young English player as well, 22 years of age. English, been playing in Italy, a bit of experience now playing first team football. Let's bring him back to England. He's mean, valuation shot up straight away. He's, he's a good option. He's our best centre back option right now is Lewis Binks. I'm hopeful that he can be our start for the next two or three seasons and hopefully take us up the Premier League table. And then following him, 
Aka Akpro is available for 1.3 million. Of course, he's played absolutely everywhere. Toulouse, played in Italy for a while. Lazio as well. Champions League football with Italy, with Lazio. And I thought, you know what? Very good player. He's 31 now. He's got a high work rate, decent tackling about him, 14 tackling off the ball, 14. Some great mental. Physicals are still really, really good as well. So 31 years of age, he adds a lot of depth in midfield. He's very versatile. He can play some other positions as well. So Akpa Akpro comes in from Lazio for the bargain price of just 1.3 million. Speaking of bargains, though, Mohamed Diame for 2.4 million. I've seen a lot of people using him this year as a, like a new wonder kid coming in from the Norwegian league, and he looks really, really good. Coming in from Nordland, of course, he can play in that CM role, he can play in that advanced role there as well. And I mean, he looks really complete already, 22 years of age. I'm hoping we can redevelop him from that 2.4 million move. I'm really hoping we can try and develop this guy into a bit of a player into the future, and hopefully something we can keep hold of and really build the team around. Um... The rest of them are some interesting ones. We bought in Gianluca Busto. He's available for quite a cheap option coming in from Venezia. Venezia were in Serie B by this point, so he wanted to move to a bigger club. Premier League comes knocking. He's there straight. First time grand a week. He came in for a grand total of 2.6 million before. Isn't too bad, really. Pretty complete. Again, the low work rate does it a bit off putting, but he's not going to be a starter for us anyway. So Busio comes in to add some depth in midfield. We bought in Billy Cometto from Liverpool for 5.25 million. I mean, you can see already on the decline already. I saw a big, tall centre-back, and then we bought Louis Binkstra afterwards, who also plays the left side of the centre-back pairing. So we'll see how this one goes. It's a bit of money spent. He's still a pretty good player. He'll do a job in the Premier League. I don't know how much he'll start for the season, but again, at six foot five, he's a big guy to aim for. And then the last one was Morgan Rogers, touching it last season. He was on loan here last season. He looked pretty good. We managed to get him for a cheap price, really. 375k. He seems absolute pennies. For a guy who had such a good season over the last season, I mean, you mentioned there earlier on, 20 games, four goals, four assists. So he's done it once for us. Let's see if he can do it again as we go into the new season. But it's tactically where things have changed now. We have gone for this 4 2 2 2 season. I mentioned previously, I kind of want to sit with two DMs this season in the Premier League and see if we can try and contain teams with them two holding players and try and get the ball forward. And we've got no width in the team, I might mention as well. Now we have two cams in there and two central strikers. So a lot of room on these wide positions here for the likes of Pring to go flunk these wings. So I'm hopeful it's going to work for us. We'll see how it gets on. I mean, the familiarity isn't great right now. Pre season's been a bit hit and miss with it so far. Badgic's still away on international duty as well, which isn't helping. He's currently away at the Olympics, I think it is anyway. So hopefully he'll be back soon. But the team's coming together. We've still got a few positions we're trying to tweak. I mean, someone better than Conway up front, most likely. And. We'll, we'll see how things go. Like the likes of Busio getting into the team. Naki Wells is still here. That first season was really well. Second season, not so much for him. I mean, 16 games, two appearances, two goals, sorry, even not appearances. So it wasn't his best season. So potentially a bit of time. We could try and get another striker in, but we'll see how things develop as we see him now and see how season three finished for Bristol City, our first one here in the Premier League. So season three comes to an end, and it was a very hard season for Bristol City. We narrowly avoid relegation. We're like to the final day of the season, almost there, on 39 points. Nottingham Forest going down on 35 points. Norwich and Sheffield United, the two teams that actually got automatic promotion last season from the Championship with us. They go automatically down. We survive just about on 39 points, level with Leeds there, on 17th position. It's not bad for our first season. We survived. That's the main thing. Staying in the Premier League was a priority this season, and we've done just that. An interesting finish as well to Everson, who are up in 6th this season. But strange things happen, and Man United actually won a league title, but... Cup-wise, nothing really happened. Newcastle knocked us out, South Hampton knocked us out. Bigger teams, it was kind of expected. It's just one of those things, I suppose, at this point. We're not going to get that far in them Cups to really develop this team a lot more. So in terms of transfers, nothing else really happened that season. We didn't bring no one else in. You can see that on screen. The same players, nothing else really changed. We've sold a few players already to start the new season, but no big money really transitioned over just yet. So we'll see how things go going into the new season, but... I'm hopeful some of the transfers we have already kind of booked in for the new season because we're actually working on a few deals already. We have got a pre-contract sign for, and now Eamon Harvey coming in from Sheffield United, of course. They were relegated, so he's available to join us. So hopefully he's going to be joining us for the new season. It looks pretty hopeful because there was a release clause in there, and he seems interested with the only team actually bidded so far on him. And we're looking at Adrian Tuffet as a new left-back option. Pring's good, but he's not at the Premier League level, sadly enough. So 
maybe a rotation option with Adrian Trufet coming in and then to switch out a few different times. We'll see how that works out for us. But again, cheap option. He's fast. He can cross the ball. He can dribble. Tackling's good. And the work rate is a little bit higher. So I'm hopeful Adrian can come in and really supply some depth in that left back position for the new season. But of course, you can see there we have a budget of 47 million to spend currently going into the new season. And there have been some absolute standout performances. I mean, the best one. It's got to be Lorenzo Colombo for me. 24 goals in his first season in the Premier League. He's absolutely risen like a star in this season. So good for us. I mean, you say straight away, got 19 in the league, four in the FA Cup as well, four in pre-season, which we saw prior as well. In the Carabao Cup, got one goal in the Carabao Cup before we got knocked out as well. Honestly, his valuation hasn't gone much higher than what I thought it would have done. I mean, we bought him for 9.5 million. And a four by now, this will be a lot higher because we've got quite a lot of goals this season in the Premier League, but it hasn't been the case so far. Um, other ones we can probably touch on as well. I mean, higher assists as well. There hasn't been massive numbers of assists. Act Pro got five, you see there. Alex Scott came back from his injury, of course. He's still looking okay, but he's been out for a year, so he needs to develop a bit more now. Now he's coming back in the first team. Hopefully, he will develop a lot more this coming season. And then, the likes of Pring, nice. We're still having a pretty good season. Nice, still around the first team as well, oddly enough. Not someone who thought he'd still be playing for us, but... Obviously, we bought players in. Some haven't really worked out. Sergio Canas has been really good, but again, he's out for five months now, so he missed a bit at the end of last season. But again, six goals, four assists. Not a bad season for him either. So, Bristol City survive in season number three, our first in the Premier League. Let's go forward now to season number four. We've survived once. Can we beat the drop again and start pushing now towards the middle of the table? So we are back now ahead of season four happening. And we mentioned previously about some transfers we were working on. We touched on those quickly now, we can say. And now Evan Hlavik has came in now for 15 million. What a centre-back to get in. Right, something better in that right centre-back. I mean, nice has been good for us, but this guy comes in. He's going to be an instant star for us. Six foot three, massive jump and reach, heading of 15 as well. Some interesting player traits, but I'd like to get forward whenever possible. I hope not too much because we're playing quite defensive this season and we can't go too far forward now. And the other one we mentioned previously as well was, of course, Aiden Trafet as well, the left-back, who has came in now on a transfer for just 4 million. Not a bad deal. Went towards both that price season for 6.75. So we've gone for a pretty of a cut price, really, from Wolfsburg. Um, yeah, we, we we bought in Lorenzo Luca as well. We already have one big Italian shot called Lorenzo. So we thought, let's get another one. Six foot seven, Lorenzo Luca comes in to join Bristol City. We went from Pisa for 2.2 million over to Salentano now. And we've paid 12.5 now. We bagged 11 goals in Serie A last season. We've made the effort now to grab him in. 12.5 million. And I mean, him up front, the two Lorenzos up front for this next season looks absolutely insane as a partnership. And I'm really hoping their goals can be clinical and get us to a mid-table finish for that new season. And then we bought Liam Delapin as a backup striker. So we've got loads of good strikers now at the club. Liam Delap, Lorenzo Luca and Lorenzo Colombo all up front for this season. We could go for three up front, but we're not going to. Delap will be that rotational player this season. At 22 years of age, still has a lot of room to develop, I think, personally. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on in the coming season for us. In terms of transfers out, we mentioned Nate Smith. He was good for us last season. He's on a free transfer. He didn't want to re-sign a new contract after I said to him he'd be a backup player, so he wasn't best pleased. And Jed Mahals went to Blackburn on a free transfer. Nothing else has really happened in terms of outgoings yet either, really. I mean, we've looked at the incomings and the outgoings. There's still 2.9 million left to go in. The window's six weeks away, so something could happen before the end of the... when you come back at the end of Season 4. We may have made some more business, but right now it's looking very unlikely indeed. But in terms of the team going now into Season 4, this is how we're kind of lining up pretty much at the moment. Badgic in there, Bola, Aminjlovic, Binks and Trafet at the back. Akpa Ak Pro in that DM role alongside Masengo. Diamande and Scott in the cam roles. And Colombo and Luca, the two Lorenzos, leading the line for us. He's looking really good with his shape now. So I think the familiarity still isn't there though, 100%. So we're going to do some more training on that this season. But again, there's some new bodies in there. So it's be interesting to see how this gets on for season number four here in the Premier League. And we're back. The end of season four. You can see the league table. We got that mid-table finish we wanted. We finished ninth in the Premier League. After a 38 game, 15 wins, 11 draws, 12 losses, a goal difference of 6, finished on 56 points. We're almost in a shot with Europe as well. Chelsea in 8th spot there. If we could have got to 8th spot, we could have landed in Europa spot possibly. The Europa League dropped down, of course, because people winning the Cups and stuff. So I thought there might have been a potential to get some European football, but obviously it hasn't happened. Ninth in the Premier League, that's not a bad finish 
for our second season here in the Premier League. Because even last season, we finished 17th just above the relegation zone. We now have a monster 54 million to play with for this next summer as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what sort of players we can get in going into the upcoming season. But yeah, a good season here in the Premier League. We've had some interesting results. I want to touch on as well the development of Mr. Alex Scott. He's now wanted by Arsenal, Fulham and RB Leipzig. He's currently unhappy and wants to move to a bigger club. So this might be the window where he goes possibly. But this season, though, 13 assists, 5 goals for him. A 7.25 average rating in 32 games. That's a very good return. For the youngster, he's really starting to improve now for that first season where he was injured as well. It wasn't great being out for most of that second season, sorry, even into the first season. But now he's finally his own. He's developing natural fitness at only 12, so it isn't great still. But after a long, big injury like that, it's going to be effective massively. But Scott is looking very, very good indeed. Our strikers, though, were the main focal point of this, of course, there would be. I'm not surprised there at all. Lorenzo Luca, he bagged 19 in his first season here in the Premier League. 14, actually, sorry, in the Premier League. 19 in total over all appearances, including the Cups, over 40 appearances. But in the Prem, 14 and 36, that's not a bad return at all from... I'm not sure what it's suddenly saying Western Supermare there as well. I'm not sure that's something happened in terms of, like, a one-day thing there, very interestingly, but... Who knows? Who knows? Uh, Lorenzo Colombo in the next one. There's some arrows going down here, which isn't great for him because currently he's unhappy. He would also want a new contract again. I'm not surprised because this season he had a great one. Same Western Super Mess. So there must be some sort of game where we gave some players of Western some sort of like, yeah, one of those. Anyway, yeah. I digress. Yeah, 16 goals in 38 appearances for Lorenzo Colombo this season. Six assists for him. Six player the matches, 7.08 average rating. Not a bad return for the pair of Lorenzos up front for us. And Diamande is someone I should probably touch him on as well this season because he got 15 goals and 7 assists in his first season here in the Premier League. He's also developing quite nicely now. 24 years of age, so he's past the like top point where he's going to get much, much better now. But again, he still looks really good. He's had a good first season in the Premier League. Be interesting to see how long we keep hold of this guy before he starts getting a lot of interest from other clubs. Uh, Alan Rodgers got six goals this season. The big centre-back, six goals for him. Not bad at all. Alex Scott, we've touched on already. He's 13 assists, five goals this season. Sibley, who we brought in, of course, was a big money move for us. And he's been he's been okay. First season, two goals, two assists. This season, five goals, four assists. So he's been doing all right for us, really, Louis Sibley. Not a massive player, but again, just someone who's been quite interesting to use and see how he can get on in the match engine as well. We should probably touch on some of the low knees as well. You might have noticed there's a certain Warren Zare Emery on loan from PSG. He came in this season as well because there was a few transfers that did actually happen after we last saw you at the start of season number four. So let's dive in quickly and have a quick look at some of those. Elliot Anderson came on loan from Everton, 2 million fee. He didn't really play. Started five, nine from the bench. He's an okay backup player. Not probably worth 2 million realistically, but we tried him out. We thought we'd give him a go. And then we went to PSG and took two of their boys. El Chade Bitashibu, maybe, got that correct? I probably not. Absolutely butchered it. Again, six appearances, backup player, 1.1 million loan fee. Hasn't really done the business. But Zé Emery has been the best of the bunch, definitely, to be sure. 16 appearances, a 7.02 average rating. He looked pretty solid and someone I wouldn't mind going in for. I mean, we got a fee of 26 million if you do want to buy him. But I'm kind of hoping you're probably getting for a little bit cheaper because already you can see here, between 16.5 and 24 million. So hopefully we can get him down to a little bit of a lower fee and try and bring Zer Emery on a permanent deal here to Bristol City. But yeah, this is how we're setting up now. We're still sticking with the Bristol box as we renamed it now. So I've the two strikers, the two cam positions, and then the two DMs in just in front of the defense. Now Zer Emery starting alongside Masengo in them roles there. It's going well. It's been a good season. It's nice to get top half finish, but now season five looms and I want to push for European football. So we're back now ahead of season number five. It's the year 2026. We play Wolves tomorrow to open the Premier League season for us. And you can guess by that point, we must have done all our transfers ahead of this new season. So following last season where we saw these boys and then the low knees and the free transfers, nothing really happened this year. We went a bit crazy. We have spent 73 million total with 35 million going out from the club. Let's touch on the transfers out first. And now Emin Hlavik left already. Um, we put a release clause in there, 35 million, thinking it's Bristol. He's probably going to have to go. It's the only way he would sign for us at the time. He went straight away to Brighton. Brighton came in after just one season and activated that release clause. So 15 million to 35 million. Not a bad return, really. So he's gone already. So that was glassed really long, that one season for him. Aka Akpro left for Lens on a free transfer as well. Sergi Canos went to Salzburg on a free transfer. 
Hiking, we haven't really ever used, went to Swansea on a free transfer. And Jordan Slora, who we bought in the first season, has now gone down to Middlesbrough for a free transfer as well. That's literally it, really. Like, we've made big money from the NL deal, but everything else, all just free transfers leaving the club. But, yeah, there's a big list of players here. We've been quite busy. Zet Emery, 25 million the end we got him for. Not a bad deal. He's already worth a lot more money already, sort of thing. But after that first season, I thought... It's worth putting 25 million and getting this guy in that DM role permanently alongside Masengo. Uh, James Kartaski on a free transfer from Everton. For free transfer, 33 years of age, good centre back option. I thought, why not? He's been around again, Everton. Went to Kansas for it, what, half a year, possibly, here by the looks of it. For coming over to Bristol City on a free transfer, so welcoming him. Uh, Lucas Canazares from Real Madrid on a free transfer again. We need a backup goalkeeper after the other guy left, and we thought. Canizares is really good for a backup option, honestly, as well. Good 14s command of area, aerial reach, handling, kicking, all got 14s, reflected 14. For someone who's going to sit on the bench this season and just be there just in case, he's very, very good. We also signed Gigi Wijnaldum, oddly enough, as well. Jorginho Wijnaldum, formerly of Liverpool, of course. He's been to PSG in this, went to Roma on low, Monaco for 3 million. Also went to Kansas, oddly enough, as well, yes. So I'm not sure that's some sort of game that's happened that we've done in the middle somewhere, possibly, again. But, yeah. Bristol, free transfer, lovely job. Wayne Adam comes in. Alfred Duncan from Fiorentina came in as well. 33 years of age. Again, good depth for them DM roles as well. Good high work rate, decent tackling, marking, teamwork as well. So I thought, as a backup player, on 26 grand a week, not bad really for a free transfer from Fiorentina. He's been there for quite a few years anyway. So we thought, grab him in, free transfer, why not? Uh, James McAtee, of course, at Man City in real life right now. He was loaned last season to Sheffield United, 39 appearances, 4 goals, 2 assists, and a full for a free transfer. Grab him in, why not? If we get European football, we need some more English players in this team, so he ticks that box perfectly, so not a bad one at all, really. We brought in Ricardo Calafiori as well, if you've heard of him before. I've used him previously with Roma, but again, he went to Basel in real life, and then since then, 2.5 million deal to come over to us. Again, he ticks all them boxes I liked with Pring earlier on in this, but a much higher work rate of 15, but again, good acceleration, good pace, both at 14. Crossing, dribbling, passing, vision all fairly high. You can get balls in the box and find Lorenzo Luca, and that's what we need. Big guy needs those balls in the box. So yeah, he came in. We brought in then for the right back position. Paz, Paz came in. He came in actually from Sassuolo. I'll double check there because I wasn't sure. Yeah, low moves to Freiburg and Frankfurt previously, but 11.25 million. And again, that attacking fullback option, he's fast. He has good pace at 15, acceleration of 16. I like that speed. Dribbling, crossing by 13, passing 13, vision 12. Again, a fast guy who can find some crosses and find Lorenzo Luca, find that big guy up front and hopefully push the season for a top half finish or even European football. I hadn't heard of Mortis Jens when we looked at him originally, but I thought for 15 million from Lorient, he looks pretty solid and needed a new centre back to replace Enel as well. 27 years of age, three caps now for Nigeria. Again, he's He's a big boy, six foot three, good jumping reach, good heading. That's why I wanted people for set pieces as well. Marking 13, tackling 13, a good work rate though. Mentally, just drew me in, braver of 16, composure of 15. So we thought it's 15 million. Let's just give him a go. It's the final season. Hopefully, he can be the one that does the job for us and we'll see how he gets on this season because we have bought in some other options as well. Toro Mings came in for next to nothing from Aston Villa. He's 33 now, 2.8 million, a rotational player at best. And then we bought in Soyuncu from West Ham. Yeah, he went to West Ham, oddly enough, in this. So where he went left Leicester for West Ham for 8.5 million that first season. And then for 12.75 million, we was like, waste transfer listed. Why the devil not? We're getting him in 55 grand a week. A very good centre-back in FM this year. Some men, I mean, a composure like a bit higher, ideally, and off the ball and stuff. But, I mean, we thought, why not? We need some more cover in there after now leaving us. And they're two very good options indeed. Uh, Yusuf Chimetti, someone I've looked at a few times this year on loan. We thought again, just for a low move as a backup striker as well. We got Dilap already there, and of course, two Lorenzo's up front. So it made sense to get in another option. It didn't cost us anything realistically, it cost us a total of 1.6 million. So again, good backup cover on loan for the season. And we bought in this new gen as well, Mark Afosu, who looks really, really good mentally. Decision making of 16, determination of 16, flair of 16, vision of 16, teamwork of 16. I just saw the mentors and the physicals and thought. Just get him in. Why not? He's 5 foot 6 and plays centre midfield. We don't even play centre midfield. We play cams and DMs before. Just get him in and he might play this season. He looks useful. 19 years of age. On loan from Dortmund. Let's give him a go. Why the devil not? So, yeah. That's what's happened this season. We're still using, of course, the Bristol box, which you can see a lot of green lines there now. Between the Zet Emery and Masengo link up there. Diamande, Scott, Luca, and Colombo all linking up lovely there. 
This is it then. The final season, season five. Can we push on for European football? But before we go to the end of season five, if you've gotten this far into the video and you have watched this rebuild, if you haven't already, go and watch Hood's one of Birmingham City. Leave a comment down below. Who has done the better job? Has it been Birmingham City or Bristol City? Hood Gaming or Murphem? Let me know in the comment section. And we're back for season five, the final season. You can see on screen, domestically we did awful again. We lost to Liverpool and Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. But we got European football in season number five. You can see on screen now, Bristol City coming seventh, getting Europa Conference League action. The final day of the season, we got enough points to get ahead of Aston Villa and capture some European football for Bristol City in just five seasons. Odd enough, Arsenal win the Premier League seems a bit more shocking than that. But yeah, after 38 games, we won 18, draw six. We lost 14 games, which is a lot more than the game, like other teams around us. But it was enough in the end to get us in there. But that goal difference of nine as well. We were very, very lucky to sneak in there. But we've managed to do it after just five seasons. Bristol City are going on a European tour in the Europa Conference League. In terms of transfer business for the rest of the season, we did actually go in January and get in Enzo Lefay. Not someone I'd heard of previously in the game, honestly. But for, he's very well rounded. He looks really good. High vision of 17, passing of 16, first touch of 15. He can play in no cam roles and Diamande and Scott aren't fully there. I mean, with the high natural fitness of 14, it's better than Scott's right now. So we thought we'll get him in and see how he gets on 10.25 million. It wasn't a bad bit of business, really. Eight assists, three goals this season, these 12 appearances from the January transfer window. It's not a bad bit of business at all. Enzo, welcome to Bristol City. You had a good first season. We'll see how he takes on in the future, possibly. Who knows? I mean, there was a reason we had to bring Enzo in. We got as far as season five before, yeah, this happened. Alex Scott left us to go to Arsenal. We've tried everything to try and keep hold of him. We've kept him for so, so long. And he finally made the switch. And I mean, to be fair, Arsenal did win the league. We touched on that just a minute ago. That's kind of why I touched on it. Arsenal win the league. And Alex Scott being a part of that team. I say a part of that team. He's probably sat on the bench. Let's find out. Was he actually playing in the game? He was on the bench. He was on the bench. He started three games and played 11 on the bench. Not great to see Scott go there and sit on the bench, but he's won the Premier League in his first season at Arsenal, so credit where he's due. But he has turned out a pretty good player by this point of the save now. I mean, the natural finishes of 12 is the only letdown really for me, but of course, that long-term injury of nine months, that will do it to you. But I mean, determination of 18 there, decision-making of 14, composure of 17, a vision of 17, passing of 14, work rate of 15. He turns out really good. This is five years, and he obviously was in the first team for four and a half years of this, apart from that nine-month injury spell, so... He developed very, very nicely indeed. I mean, I'm still bitter we lost him to Arsenal, but yeah, that's why Lafay came and used that money to get Lafay in. I thought he looks very complete, probably better than Scott right now in the game, 27 years of age. Very good player. He had an okay time here this season. But yeah, European football confirmed for Bristol City. And I mean, we should probably touch on some of the high players who did really, really well this season again. Diamonde, 10 goals, 10 assists. Love that. 16 goals for Colombo and 22 for Lorenzo Luca. Not a bad season for him. He's now whited by Brighton. I mean, Brighton just love coming from our players. See, they took a nail last season. They want to try and take now Lorenzo Luca from us. But we have European football. And that should surely scare off the idea of Brighton because I'm guessing they're quite a bit lower down than us. They are, they're in 14th. The box of Chelsea as well, similar to real life. Ninth in the league, they failed to qualify for Europe in the game and as well as in real life. So there we have it then. In just five seasons, we took Bristol City from a mid-table championship club up into getting European football. It might be the Conference League, but it's still European football in just five seasons. So a great little report, really happy with that. Again, what we mentioned earlier on the video, let in the comment section. Who thinks done better? Steve Hood and me with Birmingham City one. And we'll have that link down below, of course, as well. Or myself with Bristol City. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you are liking the video and subscribing to the channel as always. And of course, let me know what I've just said to you down in the comment section. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again very, very soon.